Okay, Mishlei 22.12, day two. Ine Hashem Natsru Da'as Salif Divrei Vogade. So translation that we had was the eyes of Hashem watch or protect or guard knowledge. And I'm inclined towards watch because it's eyes. Um, and he, Hashem, distorts, perverts, or corrupts the words of a traitor, Vogade. Okay, uh, Sadigon jumps right in, says, uh, Hashem bale hadea. The providence of Hashem protects those who possess knowledge. Okay, and then Targum, oh yeah, the only we, Targum we just saw that uh, he says, I know laka natran yediasa umetaltel uh, that it, it Hashem moves or exiles the words of the thief. So that was a little, uh, I, I'm not so confident in that translation, but okay, questions. Not very many. What are the eyes of Hashem? Okay, and according to Sadiqan, who, who answers that, why does it use this mushal of the eyes of Hashem? Uh, why is there, yeah, so yeah, just what, what's the purpose of the mushal? Um, if it does mean Hashgach Hashem, like it could have just said Hashem protects the knowledge, not the eyes of Hashem protect knowledge. Also, why is there no metaphor in the second half? Uh, and we know that there's no metaphor in the second half because... Um, because why? Oh, because it's Ini uh, Hashem Das. So the eyes is plural and Natru is plural. But Vaisalev is talking about Hashem himself. Hashem perverts or distorts the words of the Bogate. Um, so it, it leaves off on, on the Mashal after the first half. And then generally speaking, what do we do with Hashem Sukkim in Mishle? Someone asked that yesterday, so that, that might be relevant. Two, what does it mean for the eyes of Hashem to protect knowledge? How does that work? Three, what's the relationship between Notzer to protect and then Vaisalev? Um, uh, corrupt are they opposites? If so, how? If not, then what is the relationship between the two? Four, who is the Bogate in this context and what are his Devarim? Um, and uh, is Divri Bogate, how, if at all, is Divri Bogate the opposite of Das? And we said that it's the opposite of Das because you have the subject, which is Hashem, he's the one who's acting, uh, he's guarding on the one hand, distorting on the other hand, and then the thing that he's acting upon is Das in the first half and then Divri Bogate in the second half. So it seems like those are opposites. Um, yeah, five, how, why or how does Hashem do this specifically to the Divrei Bogade, right? There are lots of bad guys in Mishle, seemingly lots of them have lack in terms of their knowledge. So what's the focus on the Bogade? Six, who's the audience of this and what is the practical application? Presumably this is not talking to a Bogade, you know, Bogade is a bad guy in Mishle. So, you know, it does not seem to be like, um, uh, what do you call, um, you know, the audience. And then, uh, so then who is it talking to? And then seven, what is the Havamina? Um, uh, you know, are we, is the Havamina that Hashem does not corrupt the words of the Bogate or that he does not guard knowledge, etc. Yeah. Okay. Those are our questions. Okay. So um, should we start with, uh, with you summarizing what Zach had, or should we start with like bringing up what we did so, yesterday? I, I don't know. I don't really know how to summarize it because it, for me, it's really hard to understand what he's saying. Okay. I, that's what I want to share with you. Okay. So do we, does anyone mind if we play a recording from Zach? <laughs> okay. Zach, uh, Zach tends to have good ideas. So. <clears throat> um, okay. So there's two ideas. The first one is pretty simple. Uh, First one is just that there is um, that that anyone can learn knowledge, but not anyone can create knowledge. Uh, so let's say we talk about Torah. Anyone can learn Torah, but in order to come up with a chiddush, a person has to not be a traitor. Um, and if a person is a traitor, then they won't be able to uh, create knowledge. Uh, Probably plugging different uh, means, but I'm taking it to mean a person who puts desires above their seichel rather than their seichel above their desires. Um, second, Which, by the way, just to, um, I looked up uh, Zach's notes on Bogate from earlier in the year, <laughs> and the way he framed it slightly differently then. Because we 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 saw yesterday that uh, we when we looked at the Bzogim, a bogid is the opposite of a yashar, and one of the definitions of yashar we had is that your your emotions are in line with your mind, um, and like um, hold on just a second oh whoops okay hold on 
Yeah. Yeah. No, it's okay. Um, no. Um, and so, so we were saying that the bogey is the opposite of that, where his mind is a slave to his emotions. And even though that is a quality of many um, different types of Mishlaic fools, uh, the when it's contrasting Yashar and Bogit specifically, it's talking about like what is in the driver's seat and what is not. Um, whereas when whereas in other fools, it's emphasizing other uh, qualities of that. So in other words, that's specifically here. Yeah, let's see here. Yes, is a bit more complex uh, and has to do with. Uh, you know, maybe internal and external knowledge or uh, knowledge versus free will. But uh, the the first half is saying that there's this external knowledge that we can all access. Uh, and then there's this internal knowledge, which has to do with projection instead of, instead of perceiving external knowledge, internal knowledge has more to do with projection, which is related to free will and the ability for one to, um, uh, kind of decide for themselves who they are and so in the way this possible phrases it is that free will is almost like a tool and this tool if used correctly is quite effective and if used incorrectly becomes ineffective and distorted so if i have uh if we keep our definition of trader again i think that theoretically you could keep this idea with the definition of trader but um if i and a trader and I put my desire, I'm sorry, I got a call. If I am a trader and I put my desires above my reason, um, then I won't be able to access this tool of free will as effectively in the sense that if I try to uh, assert upon myself, project upon myself internally, that I want to be a certain way, a certain person or achieve a certain end, uh, I'll be waylaid, meaning like, that intention, that free will of mine will be distorted and corrupted, uh, which is different than a Russia per se, meaning, I mean, a Russia theoretically can have his reason ahead of his desires and not be like a traitor to himself, but and he can. That was the other idea that just jogging my memory from earlier in the year when we developed a uh, definition of a uh, bogey with Zach is that you're a traitor to yourself because you're really everyone wants to be acting in their own best interest. But if your emotions are a slave, uh, if your mind is a slave to your emotions, you're going to betray yourself and you're going to act in ways that are not conducive to your own, like uh, success and, and, and happiness. You know, access is free will. You know, he's just accessing his free will for, for bad. Um, so in this case, it's talking about specifically a bogate who puts his desires above his um, above his reason, he is unable um, to fully utilize his free will. Um, whereas someone who has his reason before his his desires can utilize his free will. Um, and in the first half, um, it's it's it seems like that there's this uh, you know that kind of like a, a protected uh, concept of knowledge that is that unlike free will doesn't change so much based off of who you are, meaning that the knowledge is fixed and we can all strive towards that, which maybe would explain why, for example, someone can do chuba, right? If you have a bogate, how can they ever not become a bogate? How can they ever make their way oh, to being a tzaddik? Is because knowledge is fixed. Um, and so they can use knowledge, um, presumably, to pull themselves away from the state they're in and then and then use be able to utilize their free will uh, more effectively okay so that was way too not simple for us to dwell on in my opinion That's um, not gonna summarize it. yeah well and also we're not going to uh, analyze it but uh i do it did refresh my memory about the definition of bogey that we had before that zach helped develop which was what i just said is like you're a traitor to yourself uh, if your mind is a slave to your emotions, and that's the opposite of a yashar, whose emotions are subordinate to his mind, both in decision making and in thinking. Uh, that's how Rabbi Yonah defines a yashar. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let, let, let's just go back to the drawing board here. So what did we say yesterday? So what we said yesterday, I think, was that um, that Hashem's uh, uh, eyes, Hashem only sees reality, so to speak, right? And um, and there, and our only way to access reality is through our knowledge. So, so if you are acting in line with knowledge, then automatically Hashem is is watching over what you're doing. Not corrupted knowledge. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. The way I'm defining knowledge is uh, is that there's no such thing as corrupted knowledge. Is that it's, there's only like knowledge and then falsehood. You know. Like yeah. So if you're acting in line with uh, with that, and again, I gave the dumb example yesterday of um, not dumb, just like not emotionally resonant example of like if you are you know a chemist and you have a, a knowledge of what's going to happen when you mix two chemicals together and it has a reaction, like like that it would be accurate to say Hashem is watching over that in the sense that like, it is definitely going to happen because that's just how the, the laws of nature work, you know? So in the contrast, so Sean was developing an idea that the bogade is someone who has to have some knowledge of what the reality is because otherwise he wouldn't be a bogade. He wouldn't be betraying somebody, you know, he would just be a fool, you know? So he has some knowledge of what, uh, of what the reality is. And then he's trying to like go around that or subvert that or something like that. And what's going to happen to him is God is going to thwart his plans because uh, because it's not going to work out. So then our question, I think that we left off with is, okay, what's the finish? Like, like, is this, I mean, uh, if this is, I forgot how I put it yesterday with, with the straw man thing, but like, if this is just saying that if you act in line with knowledge, then God, then you'll be successful. And if you don't act in line with knowledge, you won't be successful. Then that's not a finish. Yeah. Also, uh, like, how does this explain the different book? Mm-hmm. Right. So I was inclined to say Dere Bogit is not the words that he speaks, but like the, uh, the principles that he operates based on. But I don't know if I'm confident in that. So l- let's do this unless anyone has any other uh, intuitions. I have yeah. like sort of a thought. Sure. As to the finish. Yeah. So maybe for the second half, it's coming to say that, like, as, as Sean was saying, that there has to be some truth to what the trader's saying. Yeah. And he has to have some truth to him. So one might think that since like you could sort of he's sort of like maybe like technically what he's saying is true, but he's just like taking out of context or there's something which is like deceitful about what he's doing, but it is like in a technical sense true. Yeah. He might think that he also has God protecting him just like the uh, truth does. Okay, that's good. But okay, that's good. Yeah, now that but since he's really twisting it, uh so now God's not gonna I mean, we're going to have to explain that, but God's yeah. going to corrupt that and distort it and not allow that to just okay. keep watch over. Just, just a um, comment on that. Yeah. Um, why, would does he know that he is um, a traitor? I would say. Because if he knows he's a traitor, then why would he think they got us? So, I mean, he know he has, let's put it this way. He knows what he's doing, but I don't know if he like conceives of himself as a traitor because then you're right. Like, I think he has to view himself as good. Because right. yesterday yeah. we said that he wasn't that he 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 knew what he was doing. You know, we're still saying that he knows what he's doing, but I don't think he conceives of himself as a traitor. I think he I think genuinely believes that God is on his side. Like people right, right, yeah. So a good a good example of this. Uh, you know, I I. I I'm not doing the stereotypical move of going to Hitler, but like uh, you know, there is this really interesting um, thing that I don't know how well known this is. I heard about it in yeshiva, but um. During World War II, then the predecessor of the CIA, I forgot what it was called, like the, maybe it was like the OSA, or I, don't, I don't know what it is. They basically uh, got a bunch of psychoanalysts and then uh, tried to make a psychological profile of Hitler based on his writings and correspondences with like people. And like, obviously they're not, they can't psychoanalyze him because he's not going to come for therapy, you know, but, uh, but they, they tried to put together like this, uh, this, this um, portrait of him and it, the, the report and the report is available and you can read it, but the opening line. Wait a second. Oh, probably this thing. Uh, where, yeah. Yeah. So he says, I go the way that Providence dictates with the assurance of a sleepwalker. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which is a really like, makes you say like what you know but he he uh, the uh, the argument um that they make basically is that um hitler did believe that he was operate that he was under hashgacha pratas you know that like i don't know exactly what his religious beliefs are but he believed that god was protecting him and like he had a bunch of hashgacha pratas stories you know this is a good one to file away um that basically what happened was when he you know he was a soldier in world war one um and uh and he was like I think like sitting there and then like he suddenly like had this like inclination that he had to get out of the way and move. So he, like he got out of the way and then uh, 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 whatever, like, you know, bomb or mortars or whatever, like, 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 like went in the spot that he was sitting in, and, like killed the soldiers who were there. So like he had a lot of cases like this where he was convinced that that God was on his side, you know. So going to your question, 
you know, did Hitler know that he was um, manipulating the truth? Yeah, I mean, that he hired a propaganda master to do that, you know, but did he think he was evil? No, he did not think he was evil. And he thought that God was protecting him, you know? So, yeah. so that, that I already knew. Like, I understand that you can, you can have, you know, a disorder, you, you could have a disordered reality of what the good is. And right. You, you perceive it as good. Yeah. And you could even, you know, justify, oh, that's what, what God wants me to do. Right. So then, so in re, so Ted, so really, he is he doesn't believe he's a traitor. He thinks he's doing the right thing. Right. Um, so my question is, in his framework, can we say that he is distorting reality? In the true framework, he is. Yeah. I know. I, right. I understand objectively he is. Right. So then you have to say if it's if it's objectively he is, then we have to also say in the passage that. There is an objective reality, which is which is what we are saying, of knowledge, and and that is fixed, right? So so we have to say that that will corrupt anyone who has a distorted reality. Of so let me just cut straight to the uh, the question that you're trying to answer, which is uh, I think we do have to answer is what do we mean by bogate according to this approach, right? Because I don't think it is this is definitely not in line. Well, okay. Yeah, I, I think I think let me, let me first state the move that you made, which is why I like the approach. And then let's re-examine our question. So the move is, you know, we have this question of why does it uh, phrase, why specifically the Bogate? And then why does it say that Hashem protects knowledge? Like, how is that the opposite of this? And so the main move you're making is saying that the Bogate thinks that he's under divine protection, but he's really under divine, like, um, salif. You know, like, like, like God is going to do the opposite of Hushkafa. God is going to like undermine his plans, you know? So, so now the question is, what's the definition of Bogade, um, you know, that, uh, that this is true of? Yeah. So maybe it's somebody who is, I, let's say it's the words of a Bogade for now. Right. So somebody who's saying something which on a technical level maybe is true. Yeah. But really he's using it to trick someone or distort something. Okay. All right. So... According to that definition, then the guy knows what he's doing, but thinks he's under. So now the question is, why does he think he's under divine protection? Presumably because he thinks that the ends to which he's right. using this as a means for are is is, is, is good, right? Yeah. Okay. So then the question is, question is what? Oh, sorry, can you say that one more time? Is somebody who's saying something which maybe on a technical level is true, but it's he's sort of uh, try he's using it to trick somebody or to distort something. So he, so it's not Hitler. So it's not Hitler. Uh, no, it doesn't have to be as bad as Hitler. Yeah, oh, right, right. right. If he, so what's what is technically true? Right. Well, like we said yesterday, like if you, uh, you know, you can. Well, let's take Lushan Hara, right? Lushan Hara right. is true, right? In order for it to be Lushan Hara, it has to be true, but you're using it in a way to like manipulate people's opinions about this person, right. you know. So, uh, but how how is it in line with your first idea? That if it just says, I mean. Well, he thinks that so he's doing something good, yeah, and he's saying something true, so that the eyes of Hashem are going to protect him, right? So, what there's nothing wrong here, right? Like, I'll give you an example of this, okay? Right? Let's say you have a business, okay, and you think that you are objectively like uh, uh, the best person to uh, provide the service, right? So, what you do is you engage in character assassination of your competitor, you, you spread the rumor or not the rumor, you spread the truth that hey, do you hear this other guy like, like went bankrupt? And let's say you went bankrupt, right? And you're saying this as Lashon Hara, so it's true, it's true speech, but it's negative. And you're doing it because you just want to like bring the other guy down because you know that you're going to be best for the for the market or whatever, you know. So you're engaging in 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 you're knowingly engaging in taking um, truth and then using it to manipulate manipulate people's opinions, and you feel like you're justified because I am the best in the business, right. you know. So God is it has to be on my side because he wants he's gonna of course he wants me to succeed. Right. So so. What we what so what were we saying yesterday that's different than today? Well, this is much more. This is uh, m much more specific in terms of the havamina, right? The, we weren't really suggesting havamina yesterday. Here, it's saying that the havamina is that that God will protect you if you if you engage in this type of uh, of divri bogate, you know, and it's saying that He won't. Uh, we haven't defined it yet, but I want to get down to the the core of that. Well, I mean, I mean, I think I think the best example is. Well, first of all, I don't. Necessarily, so we're not saying a traitor knows he's a traitor. He thinks he's doing the right thing. Well, he thinks he's doing the right thing, but he also knows that he's manipulating people's perceptions of reality uh, with his words. So that so so 
So that's the thing. I don't necessarily think that he even is aware of that. Okay, you, you, I'm not saying it has to be that way, but according to your interpretation, and also it, it, Sean said he'd just be a fool, not a traitor. Right. Well, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Well, I. I so that would be the question on you, which is you'd have to explain in what sense is he a traitor. Now you could say he's so just a traitor because he's going into reality, but then you put him into the same bucket as all the other fools. Right. So what is a, so what is a fool again? So if, uh, so let's uh, take an avil, right? Like a, a stam mishleik uh, fool. So an avil makes decisions based on short-term pleasure and avoiding short-term harm. Uh, and uh, But he's not even necessarily aware of what the long-term is, you know? So he's not knowingly like... Bad, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, right. I, he's just unaware. He's just like caught up in the moment, in the pleasure of the moment. I just feel like the best example of this is like this monazat, with like what they're doing with like distorting the reality of like, you know, uh, their, their sex change. Yeah, I'm not even joking. <laughs> I didn't see going in that direction. Yeah. Uh, it's no, just, I saw it. Okay. It's because I said this answer. It's just, you know, that, that is, they're being, there are a traitor to reality. And what's so funny? I'm being serious. This entire speech was just to lead up to this one point. <laughs> I'll get funny, whatever. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, like, like, there's a whole movement. Like, 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 I don't, I can't see the stop. I, I, I feel like the, uh, I feel like this example re requires way too many premises that we'd have to like, like talk about before we even got close to using but it. How is that? That's like the best example. Right. No, let's not use that example. Ever. No, it's not. The, uh, the there are many also, examples of people just starting. Yeah, I think the work examples are pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because they're not even, they're not intentionally. Yeah, doing I like that. bad examples. <laughs> They're not, they're not okay, let's uh, uh, let's we, we can talk about that example later. All right. Um, yeah. Um, so what do we need to answer now? So the, so the question is, uh, so what exactly is the mistake? Well, right. Also, yeah. Also, how do they get forwarded? I mean, like, so if, if, if I use Alshon Hara to put somebody else down, and it is true. Uh, so right. That I'm gonna get, like, right. People do a lot of real harm with Lashon right. and succeed right. in their yeah. goals. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let's do this just because now that we have several approaches, let's start looking at some of Farshim just to see what, uh, if any of them takes any of these approaches. Can you, can you just say what's the question one more time? Yes. Yeah, so the question. So the main, the main question we keep running into is <laughs> what is a bogade? What is a traitor? And if you define him too broadly, then it ends up just being like any other fool. You know, so what specifically, why is it, I think that's the central question. What, what is a trader and why is the puzzle focus on that guy? And the most recent move we have is this guy thinks God will protect him and the puzzle is saying it, that he doesn't. Well, what happened to the trader to, to reality? Um, so that's still a viable approach. We could say that it's a trader to reality. Um, and then the third approach we have is you're a trader to your own values. Like, like you are really not acting in your own best interest. Those are like the three candidates here, either a traitor to um, either a question mark, we don't know what the traitor is, um, but traitor being someone who knows the truth and like goes against it, or traitor to reality where you're just acting contrary to reality or a traitor um, in to your own values. Those are like the three candidates for traitors, I think. All right, let's look at side you going because um, we liked his uh, translation. Uh, this is not in the packet. Side you going says, Okay, nothing. Wait, no, wait, yes. Oh, sorry, that's funny. Wait, this is the wrong pair. That's why, I, uh, that's why I'm uh, messed up here. Okay, um, was that satisfying for anyone else? <laughs> All right, uh, 22. Um, Got a real moment of panic there. And you're like, he says nothing. And I was like, what no? <laughs> well, he might still say nothing. Uh, uh, what what possible going on? 22? Uh, 12. 12. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. Ba'olam alder ha'ashchasa. So in this world, then it is by way of destruction, meaning God will destroy him. Uva fo'al alder ha'mopes. And I don't know what he means by uva fo'al, by way of miracle. Olam haba alder ha'dirug ba'ahavchana gamiach. Okay. Yeah, there's not enough information to go off here. All right, let's 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 just go to Mitzvah's David, which is in our packet. No, he says stuff. I just, it, it, I don't know. I don't know what he means. And I don't want to use time on it right now. Okay. Uh, Mitzvah's David. Eni Hashem. 
Hamakum, so this is the bottom right. Hamakum yesh giach b'shmiras anche das. Okay, so he does take Sadiqon's approach. God will providentially watch over uh, and protect those people who have knowledge. The avis lekalkal divrei atas aboged, and will pervert and and uh, ruin the words of advice of a bogade. Asher yidaber lilkod anche das, who try to use their words to ensnare people who have knowledge, and, he, and they will not be able to, uh, to, to defeat them. Okay, so now he's saying something specific, right? So the way it works is like this. There's two people in the Pasuk. There's the guy who has knowledge, and there's the bogey who's trying to trick him through giving him misleading advice, and saying that God will prevent the, the man of knowledge from getting ensnared by the, by the bogey. That's so, obvious. Yeah, so let's, let's work this out, though, because it, it might be obvious, but it's specific enough that we can like, like get an idea out of it. Right. So how? So the question is like this: Doesn't the guy who has knowledge isn't he himself able to? Well, the question is, how does this work? How does it work that this guy doesn't get ensnared by the debris bogate? Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. But uh, as far as the Havina, it's like um, I'll say that not to uh, get in a conversation with the Epicurus because like he'll he'll you'll, you'll think they're going to convince him and he'll, he'll end up convincing you. So that's like I think that's Havina. what I said in the Rabbi Moskowitz. I don't think Chazal uh, Chazal say that. I, I, and I've heard it like other places also. Yeah, because what Chazal say, if this is the thing you're thinking of, this is on Damash and Tashi Vlad Pikoras, you should know what to respond to an Apikoras. And Chazal say this is only an Apikoras who's a non Jew. But if it's Apikoras who's a Jew, who's a Jew, you're only going to make him more of an Apikoras. Oh. I mean, you, 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 there might be another statement you're thinking of. I just okay. wanted to. So, yeah. I know I've definitely heard. I've All right, either way. This is a true idea, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll take that idea. Yeah, yeah. Right? And that's kind of how we the puzzle, because so, like, you think that you think that if you keep uh, interacting with this person or um uh like you you will get swayed mm -hmm. i mean it's not so obvious that actually it's even possible uh, it's not so obvious that like you're gonna um just be able to brush him off because, right especially if he's, if he's working within some some sort of truth right then um you know then you you would think that you're yeah that there's like you're kind of gonna get pulled one way or the other and then like the boss is telling you to like Somehow, some way, like God. Yeah, and just to just to support that, I mean, again, we, we connected this to the puzzle that we did beforehand, which is with the king, that a king loves those who have uh, who are pure of mind and who have uh, graceful lips. Um, but we said that a person who has pain spas of could also trick the king, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and there are many like smart people who can get tricked by someone who's like clever enough, you know, um, so. Yeah. By the way, just to point out in terms of our definition of bogate, he does seem to be using the word bogate as an interpersonal trader, someone who's going to betray you because he's trying to trick you. Right. Yeah. So the question is, how does God protect you? Yeah. So I think there could be two ways. One is, well, if he does give you misleading information, let's say for a second and you, you trust him for whatever reason, yeah. then time will tell. You know, time will you know, show exactly who this individual is. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, or, you know, he'll, if he does provide this information and if you do, you know, your due diligence, then you'll, you know, start asking questions and like through your chachma, your knowledge, you'll just, you know, get the truth out. Yeah. So I, I guess my question on the first approach is that it might be true that over time people will figure this out, but you could do a lot of damage in that time. Like Bernie Madoff tricked a lot of people for long periods of time before anyone found out that he was a, uh, you know, that he was swindling them. Um, uh, I am more inclined to think the second way that when it says that God will, will uh, protect him, it means through his knowledge. But now that goes back to the, the question that it seems obvious. Yeah. I have an approach. I don't really like it though. Okay. Um, maybe it's like, according to somebody who just has DOS and acts with that. Yeah. He's like, as we said, like in line with, God's eyes and how yeah. he sees, and that's going to work out. So technically, if somebody like this, like our, let's say the the business example, and yeah. he's going around spreading truth, yeah. even though he's trying to mislead everyone, the, this the same thing will happen that he's spreading truth, and it's really according to nature. Let's say it's going to come up, the truth; it's going to work because all he's doing is spreading truth. Right. But maybe like since. At least in Sudas David is viewing this in the realm of Hashkacha. Maybe there's a special Hashkacha that if somebody tries to like manipulate the reality and try to like use truth to his benefit to harm everyone else, 
then God's like not going to allow that to happen. Yeah. So tell me why you don't like it. And we'll see if it's the same reason I don't like yeah, it. I think it's invoking oh, Hashgacha to my Yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah. It's like the, the magic Hashgacha band aid right. of like, yeah, God will prevent it from, uh, yeah. So yeah. I mean, it just seems that's what it's saying. Yeah, it does. But again, it, it's also like, like you know, I don't even know if, the, if it's true Hashgachically that like God is going to intervene to stop people from tricking uh, I mean, other people. Are just some like, I want to say like, oh, don't worry. If somebody speaks bad about you. Right. Right. I mean, look, uh, like, like the, uh, the, 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 um, uh, I mean, I guess you could use this. Let's take like in 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 Vice Rishon. You know, there were false prophets all around yeah. spreading lies, right. and like you know, God helped in terms of by providing true prophets, but it didn't really like stop the damage. Yeah, Moshe. Um. So, like for the question you just asked, like how is God like intervening if He doesn't? You know, um, like I, I like what you said before about like like do you know and yeah, because that's like. I don't know. Sometimes you just like get a thought and you know it's right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I, that to me, that's the best candidate for how God helps you, which is it's saying that like through your knowledge, you'll be able to figure out that this guy is tricking you, but I still don't know why it's framing in terms of God's eyes, you know? And, and this might pair well with what we said yesterday about like, you know, like if you're operating in the realm of knowledge, you're operating in the realm of things that God sees because it's reality yeah unless you could say that unless you could say that um you're so confident in your knowledge that you won't be swayed you know like so confident you're, you're, you won't be it's swayed. almost like you have uh-huh. a certain level of stubbornness right which that's interesting which is like uh which is a certain sense of like muzzle you know through your upbringing or through your you know persona or whatever where you just won't be swayed mm-hmm. by anyone <laughs> that's that's an interesting approach um, also okay it's, it's possible because it's not it's not rational it's, yeah it's almost like an emotional thing but that's positive in this sense mm-hmm. maybe you like nice some sort of yeah that would be that would be a reason why i would frame it in terms of a god doing this instead of you doing this because it's not active on your part it's like an intuition yeah yeah like is there? possibly the reason why it's using god here is because it's saying just like in the beginning how uh, the eyes of god are the basically the perceiver of reality yeah that, and that's like what's good. So to trying to, if you try to trick people and distort people and like basically mislead them, then just like God sees reality, he also sees that this is evil. And because of that, I'm gonna have to explain how it's not gonna work out, but yeah. it's basically based on Fafma or something else. Yeah. People are gonna see through it, just like they see knowledge, they're gonna see what you're doing. Either. Right, yeah, yeah. That, uh, it seems like a good approach and the same questions that we have uh, before. Uh, yeah. I think a general question of some of the ideas I'm hearing is that just going back to the different bogey versus, it's, it just seems that that which is getting like thwarted is somehow like almost internal to the different bogey and not like, the Chacham will triumph over what the Bogate is saying. So you're not saying Mesut's David, because Mesut's David is is saying that the Bogate will not triumph over the Ish Da'as, right? I mean, it's fine if you don't take the Mesut's yeah. David's approach, but just, uh, you know, I don't think what you're saying works out for the Mesut's David. Because he, and oh, he... No, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just showing the... He said, he said what? He him? said that the... Um, that... <laughs> Yeah, uh, oh, sorry. the eye. Uh, wait, baby. Uh, the eye. Uh, uh, God will watch over the, the and protect the people who have knowledge, and will thwart or you know corrupt the the, the uh, and and ruin the advice given by the bogate, who will try to ensnare the people of knowledge, but will not be able to defeat them. Right. So yeah. That's what I'm saying. I mean, what I'm saying is that, is that this is it, it. seems like from what Arnold and Ezra are saying is that somehow the or the yeah, the 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 god the ball das is gonna like do something to like get over this. I mean, I guess a lot of what you were saying before is that like the way God's gonna do this is through the Chacham yeah or the the das guy yeah the das guy yeah. Um, it's just like it seems like from the past, like not so active on his part. Yeah, it, the 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 guy is being uh, is passive, which is why what Ariel saying appeals to me that it's not something actively that you do, or kind of like what Moshe was saying also, like like you know you just it's going to be like an intuition. So it's depicting it as coming from outside. Well, let's just do a couple more parts and just see if we get more ideas here. Rabbeinu Yona on the left side. Uh, da'as is ish da'as. Okay, fine. So he takes the same approach that God protects the man of knowledge. Same thing in Tehillim when it says, I am tefila. Uh, it means a uh, very epic line. Yeah. Right. I am the 
Yeah, uh, <laughs> Uvira <laughs> Inyan Ish Das and the explanation of, um, of uh, Ish Das, Ish Emes, is a man of truth. Kia Das, he ha Emes. Knowledge, uh, knowledge is the truth. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Isn't it obvious? All right. Rosal Omar Ish Ohefa Das Van. Okay, there he is. a man who loves truth and uh, knowledge and truth. So, by the way, side point that is the Rabbinian owner's definition of a Yashar. If someone who is so in line with the truth that he's attracted to the MS, which is why Yashar is the opposite of Bogate. So that, that is consistent with what I know from Vinny Yona from before. Vachain Yakari Yashar. Oh, there you go. Misha Oiva Yoshar Vanis. Okay, fine. So, so Vinny is consistent with himself. Oh, this is a great paragraph that would have solved so many issues just in a really five page long Yona. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Yeah, this is a good one. Vachain Yire Elokim. Yeah, I got to bookmark it. Yire Elokim Anche MS. People who fear God, men of truth. Vachain Oiva MS. People who love the truth. Okay. So, Ish das, someone who loves the truth, okay? That is more than just someone who's acting in line with the truth, right? Someone who's a truth seeker, who looks for truth in everything that they do, avoids falsehood scrupulously. Okay, so that, we, that's a more vivid picture of who this guy is. <laughs> this proves what we uh, explained. The, the, the word das that is mentioned in the beginning of the Pasuk who meet us hayashar ha'ohe vadas vayosher. That is the trait of the yashar who loves knowledge and uprightness. Alkain he's kibur sofa mikra in yana bogey. That's why it mentions bogey at the end. Ki hefach yashar ha bogey because the opposite of yashar is bogey. Moshe klasu v'tachas yasharim bogey. Like it said above earlier this year, in place of yasharim is a bogey. V'kasher hikdam nulachab b'harbi mekomas. And as we've explained in many places, okay. Now he explains the idea. Uber in yana mikra. The explanation of the idea of the pasuk is eni hashem nasu das ish hayashar v'ish ha'emes. That the man of uprightness and the man of truth will not suffer a misfortune of harm when he pursues truth by not flattering a Russia. Because Amru Musarim, as it says in, in the books of Musar, Savola MS Vim Yamer, um, tolerate truth even if it is bitter or even if it's exchange, I don't know what this means. As it says, the righteousness of the upright will uh, save them. I don't know what this means yet, but I got to read the whole thing. By Salaf Divri Bogid, and he'll corrupt the words of the Bogid. He will not succeed, the, the Bogid will not succeed in his, his uh, words of lies and deceit, and will, uh, and uh, he will, God will make him stumble in his speech. Uh, uh, God will make their tongue stumble. Okay, so that last part is not related to directly to the Pasuk. So what is he saying? So he's saying the guy who loves truth will be protected by Hashem in the sense that the guy, the bogate who's trying to uh, make, hold on, the boat, maybe, see, I don't know if he's talking about an interaction between the bogate and each MS or, or not. To not flatter the Russia. What does he mean? Yeah, that um, I don't even know if I'm translating it correctly. That the man of uprightness and the man of truth, uh, there will not befall him any harm when he pursues the truth to not flatter the Russia. Don't know what this means. And he pursues the truth. Yeah, in other words, I, 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 okay, I, I think, okay, let, let me try just positing what the case is he's talking about here. There's oftentimes a temptation that you know you can get on uh, an advantage by engaging in some degree of flattery, right? Yes. Like, you know, and like, like it's very, very tempting to just have a little bit of distorting the truth and like talking someone up in order to get that advantage. But the Ish Das will not do that at all, right? Uh, he will, because of his love of truth, he will not flatter the guy because that's engaging in some sort of falsehood, you know? Specifically a Russian. Yeah, and I don't know where Benio is getting that from, you know. Maybe saying that because of like the last one where we said that we're like kind of part of the deal, so you have to like be possible when you're talking to people. Yeah. So like you could say that, oh, he's an Ishtas, so he's just gonna always 
and he's completely uh, okay. sinful and he's never going to use Chachma in his words. And then it's like, well, that's not really an da. So it's specifically to a Russia because that's someone who there is no gain in reality to flatter in a Russia. Right. Versus like right. you flatter people in general. Like, uh, I don't know, you, your wife says, does this make me look bad? And you don't say, <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm going to eat Shemes. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. Uh, uh, like, yeah. Uh, even God. Right. Yeah. What? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So that that is a good explanation for why he focuses on Russia. Yeah, so you're saying yeah. he's not getting it from the puzzle. He's getting it from the fact that it yeah. has to be a case where there's not going to be any. I mean, the the the, the only problem is there's other chazals that say that flattery is always bad, but we don't have to pay attention, pay attention to those chazals. Uh, I, I recently read a chapter in Del Carnegie that talks about that. Yeah. He does say flattery is bad, but there's also a difference between genuine flattery. Genuine flattery. No, there's a yeah. flattery, there's just something <laughs> else that's genuine, which you do, which is good. Right. Versus that. Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're pointing out someone's good qualities, and um, I guess that's the question, how do you draw the line, right? Because if yeah. you point out someone's good qualities, and you know that it's going to make them positively disposed towards you, then uh, how is that different from flattery? You could make the argument that flattery is, is only when you engage in falsehood, you know, yeah. um, and like like say that someone is really good when they're really not, which would fit here. All right, so what, what is he? See, this is so good in the sense that he's giving us a specific picture of who we're talking about, but I don't know what he's doing with the puzzle, you know? Let's do one more and just see if the Meiri helps us out. Um, uh, Meiri on the right side. Eni Hashem Natsur Das with Yisrael with Divrei Bogit Nira Li Shachas Mila Achas V'Roi Lios Natsur Ish Das. Okay, everyone's adding the word Ish Das here. Okay, so that's that's good to know. Hakavana Biyud Hagmov Onesh. The intent of the pasuk is in promising reward and punishment. Shehu Yisparak Shomer Hachachamim Ba'Anshei Das. God protects the those who are wise and people of knowledge. Mukalkal Inyani Harushayim, and He ruins the. Uh, like the the affairs of the Rishayim, the divri eno nigzar heina milashin dibor rak milashin inyan. Okay, so that's like what I wanted to say that the word divri does not mean words of; it means like matters of the matters of the uh, of the Russia. Kenyan al davar hakesef on the matter of the silver. That's by Binyamin. Al davar hatzvardim on the matter of the frogs. Vze vze davar asher mal Yoshua. Okay, fine. Klomer vze ha inyan shabishvilo mal Yoshua v'rabim kumohu. Okay, so he doesn't give us much in the way of uh, interpretation. He's just helping us out reading it. So let's do this. Let's just in the, in the remaining minutes. Let's just try to put together our own explanation using Rabbi Yonah's definition of uh, of this ish das. God protects a person of truth, which means someone who loves and seeks truth in all of his ways, and then somehow that is going to result in messing up the plans or plots of the bogade. Let's just see. Let's just work with that. Like we're, I'm basically taking our favorite aspects of these uh, things that we've seen, and 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 we'll see if we can make it work. Are we looking to make this work in a way that's not obvious? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it just kind of seems like what the Yona is kind of obvious. Like, well, but but the, the difficulty with Ben is why he like limits it to the case of flattering the Russia, you know, and, and that that's that to me is either I don't understand it or I think it's too specific. Well, so, I'm sorry, what was the Rabbinian definition of uh, ish das? Is that what you're asking? Uh, yeah, this das is the ish das, it's someone who who values the truth in like a way that is uh, I don't want to use the word excessive because that implies bad, but he's just driven for the truth in every area, you know, and he's not going to engage in a single word of like falsehood, okay? Yeah, so, so yeah. to the Russia, yeah. <laughs> So you want us to fit around with the puzzle? I, I want to get an idea from the puzzle based on this. Okay, here's the thing. I don't want to spend another day on this, but what I do want to do is, uh, I, I think I'm going to look through all the other Mepharshim, see if we can find something, and then maybe start off tomorrow by just going over that and then move on to the next puzzle. Okay, um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, we can't, uh, I don't think we've had a single day this year where we haven't gotten an idea. So no puzzle left behind. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, let, let's. Uh, we'll. We'll, uh, we'll see if we. We'll see if I can find something tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. And you can continue to think about it. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah.